So this is the Alamo today. You may be wondering how this place was ever a battlefield. Well back in 1836 things looked very different and the purpose of this video is to show what the Alamo battlefield looked like in 1836. But first, a little glimpse on how the Alamo began its life. First founded as Mission San Antonio de Valero on May 1st, 1718 and over the years becoming a large walled-in compound, although never meant for military use, things would soon change. First fortified by the Mexicans in 1835 to counter the Texian Rebellion, the Alamo appearance changed drastically from mission to fort. With 21 cannons in their arsenal, cannon platforms were built along with the palisade and the lunette to protect the south main gate. Our tour begins at the main gate on the south wall, known as the Low Barracks. Serving mostly as barracks, it has a jail and a guardhouse in the west wing, a kitchen and hospital in the northern wing, as well as Jim Bowie's room, believed to be the door nearest the gate on the east side. The building location can be easily found because the planner believed to have been built on the original foundations. Originally, just the gatehouse remained during the mission period, then later expanded by Alamo de Perez after 1803. We move on to the southwest corner where the Alamo's biggest gun was placed. Originally built out of adobe and served as Indian quarters during the mission period, it now houses the artillery command post and blacksmith shop. During the 80s, excavations uncovered the original walls. These gray walls mark the location of the entire building structure built on top of the original foundations. As we move further north, we find the 12-pound gun aid firing through a hole cut through the wall and the Trevino House, which is believed to be the headquarters of Colonel Travis. Along the west wall is a collection of buildings that originally was used as Indian quarters during the mission period, but now serves as barracks for officers and married families at this time. Further north, we have the southern Castadina house with its cannon position firing through one of the old mission windows. All the other windows are filled in with stone and fitted with loopholes for firing through. Here we have the northern Castadina house and the north wall protected by five cannon, possibly three nine-pounders, a six-pounder, and either a 12 or 16-pounder. The battery in the center is to believed to be where Travis was positioned at the time of the battle. Once thought to be in ruins, the north wall was actually much stronger than once believed. This is the cannon battery known as Fortin de Turin, armed with three cannons in the probable location Travis was positioned and died during the battle. As we move east and south, this is the Long Barracks extension and a spot we know almost nothing about but it is thought to be the quarters for the artillery. This is the Long Barracks, which served as barracks and an armory on the lower floors and a hospital on the upper floor. In fact, this is the first documented hospital in Texas beginning in 1805. This was also the fallback position during the battle and some of the most brutal fighting took place here. During the mission period, this building was the Convento and Granary and construction began in 1727. Between the church and the low barracks, the Mexicans built the palisade to protect the area in front of the church by sinking wooden posts side by side about eight feet tall with a firing step and possibly a four pound cannon to help protect it. The Texians added a row of felled trees outside this position for extra protection known as an abatis. This was to be the new mission church although it was never completed due to the lack of workers, but here is a glimpse of what it could have looked like had it been completed. The church had very thick walls, and although not completely roofed, its smaller rooms were, and were mostly used as powder magazines. Inside the church, the Mexicans placed a very large cannon platform known as Fortin de Cos, armed with three cannon, either two six-pounders and a four-pounder, or three four-pounders. To accomplish this task, they had to lower the church's back wall to 15 feet tall. This is the Convento Courtyard, originally built as living quarters for the missionaries with an arched cloister, but was never finished. What was left was torn down by the Mexicans to use the stones elsewhere throughout the mission. This is inside the arched gallery behind the long barracks and all that remains of the arched cloister from the mission period. Inside the long barracks, the Texians built trenches in which to take shelter during the last stand since the long barracks was the fallback position during the battle. 
Here is the north side of the church and the location of the sacristy where the women and children took shelter during the siege and battle. In the 1880s, half of the sacristy was demolished for unknown reasons. This is the east side of the Alamo behind the church. This is the northern courtyard. With only a four-foot-tall wall, this position was protected by trenches and either a four- or six-pound cannon. This is also where the latrines of the Alamo were located. So that's how the Alamo probably looked during 1836, and I hope you all enjoyed it. If you want to know more on the history and how the Alamo became what it is today, please check out my other video called The Alamo Evolution. Again, thanks so much for watching, and God bless.